everybody. And it's still Hankathon. And it'll probably be Hankathon until I decide it's not Hankathon anymore. But today, we are going to be talking about the first Hank Bradshaw novel, Dead Dame Walking. <clears throat> and for those of you who don't know or might know, or if you were one of the lucky ones, lucky ones, to get um, a paperback version of this when I was writing it under my pseudonym of Mick Hunter, um, you will know that when this book first came out, um, the original title was not Dead Dame Walking, but it was You Tell, You Die. <clears throat> And um, the Dead Dame name came after I wrote Dead Dame on the Floor. And the reason for that, um, like series name, the Dead Dame kind of thing, is because I was um, like trying to figure out better ways for algorithmic things on Amazon and ways people um, understand uh, a book series and how they gravitate towards book series. And one of the things that um, people like, or at least pretend they like, according to the numbers, is if the series has a name that... Um, is repetitive throughout the series. So, Dead Dame Walking, Dead Dame on the Floor, Dead Dame Curse, Dead Dame in a Trunk, the whole thing. The second reason why I liked this is because the term Dead Dame, I think, elicits the idea that it is a um, character and stories set in an older time because it is um, like a hard-boiled detective. The hope for these was I wanted to kind of have it be a, like bridging the gap from the 50s into the 60s. And I've read a lot of hard-boiled detectives that take place in the 50s and a lot of noir that takes place in the 50s. And I've also read some hard-boiled detective-type stories that take place, like, in the late 60s. One thing that I've noticed between the 50s and the 60s when working with stories like this is that the 50s characters are much more hard-nosed. Um, they're not... They don't have a whole lot of sense of humor. Whereas the ones in the 60s are full of humor and full of self-deprecation. And um, there's just this, uh, it's more kind of corny. And so there are elements of the late 60s stuff that I like, especially the not taking yourself so fucking serious with the 50s stuff. Um, they're just, it, it's too serious. And, um, I think the Mike Hammer books, especially the pre JW Mike Hammer books, um, especially the later ones of those, you start getting little glimpses of the world outside when these books were written. It's a really interesting, um, I don't know if microcosm is the right word, but it's like this weird place where you have all of this sensibility from the greatest generation and the Red Scare and um, nuclear and atomic age and all this other shit. And then you go to the hippie invasion, free love, um, civil rights, women's rights, um, and all these things. And 
there seems to be this, like, at least in stuff that I've read, where it's either here or it's here, and the the bridge isn't there. It's either before civil rights, let's say, or after. It's before women in the workplace, not as secretaries, or after. You know, it's like there's there there was never and maybe it's just because the amount of time that took place was so short between and I don't know how else to explain this but like between like my grandpa and my dad like it, it it's like night and day like how one was to the other when i started working on the Hank Bradshaw books I wanted to try to um, put as much stuff in there. Like, you know he's from the 50s. You know he's that guy. But I wanted to try to fit as many elements of um, the world changing in as I could. And I was hoping as the books went, you would see... Um, the change in Hank, if that makes any sense. So that was the big lofty goal. Um, and um, I went on a tangent because I didn't get to tell you the third reason why I like the Dead Dame title. It's because of alliteration, just like my Zombie Zero series, you know. Uh, but anyway. So what Dead Dame Walking is about it's about this um, woman who runs a tabloid who, um, and it's so funny because we're kind of been going through this a lot in the world right now, but um, people who have been taking her to court for ruining their lives with um, slander and libel and defamation and things like that. She's done this so many times and gotten away with it in the courts that there are death threats coming for her. And um, there are attempts that on her life, like she's been shot at and stuff like that. But there are so many people who have motive to go after this chick and knock her off that she doesn't know like the first place to look. And so she hires Hank Bradshaw, private dick, to find out who her killer is because she knows that she doesn't have much time left. So um, that's the whole um, bit about it. And so she invites Hank over to her um, beach house where she's going to have this dinner with um, a bunch of her um, closest associates and friends and stuff like that. And when Hank gets there, she gives him this giant file. And in the file are all the death threats that she's gotten. And so Hank's reading through him, trying to figure out like which ones just sound like a nut job and which ones sound like um, you need to pay attention to this. And then um, through this whole charade and everything that's going on, they sit down to dinner and she introduces Hank and what he's doing there. And she basically says that there have been attempts on my life. People want to kill me. I'm getting death threats. And I'm not 100% sure but I basically think it's coming from one of you, the people in the room. And so everyone's like shocked to shit. But then she goes through and explains like what motive each person in the room would have for wanting her dead. And um, while she's in this whole shabil talking all this trash and Hank's just trying to eat his fucking steak and just trying to drink his fucking drink, she drops dead. And so now we have a murder mystery and Hank has to find out who did it. So um, 
I think the book's really fun. Um, I enjoy um, the characters in it. There were actually, I read it back um, not too long ago when I started writing the next Hank book. And there were a lot of characters that I brought up in that book that I, I really want to play with again that um, I think would be great to have in um, other stories. So it's really cool because like I typically don't like to read the stuff that I do. Like I don't like to like, I don't know, read it for pleasure or whatever. Like once I write it, I'm done. Like, I will try to do an edit on it or have somebody else do it. But like, I don't want to fucking read it again. I just fucking wrote it. And I know that's a bad thing. And all the writers out there are like, no, you have to do like 17,000 drafts and, you know, really hone it. And that's cool. Like there are people who do that and love doing it. I just, um, I can't do that. So that's dead damn walking. If you've read it, let me know down below what you thought of it. Um, and if you have read it, uh, be sure to leave a review on Amazon for it or any of the Hank Bradshaw books. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, and um, I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.